Hello everyone, now let us discuss about various ICD 10 CM codes for myocardial infraction, including the current complications that are associated with MI. Coming to the definitions, there are different types of myocardial infractions. Let us discuss the definition of each type. First is acute myocardial infraction. Acute myocardial infraction is nothing but a type 1 MI. It is a type 1 MI. It is a spontaneous heart attack. Type 1 myocardial infarction is a spontaneous heart attack caused by plague, erosion, fissure, rupture or dissection. And a ST elevation myocardial infarction is a ST EME is a ST elevation myocardial infarction with 100% blockade or blockage of coronary artery. ST EMI. In ST EMI there will be 100% blockage of coronary artery. And the ST EMI is more severe than the non ST EMI. That is, ST elevation myocardial infraction is more severe than the non ST elevation myocardial infraction. Coming to non ST elevation myocardial infraction definition, uh, an, an ST EMI is a non ST elevation myocardial infraction caused by a severe narrowing of a coronary artery severe narrowing of a coronary artery here in n st emi non st emi the artery is not 100 percent blocked whereas in st emi the artery is 100 percent blocked in non st elevation myocardial infraction the artery is not 100 percent blocked that is the difference and this is less severe when compared to st elevation myocardial infraction <coughs> Now coming to myocardial infraction type 2. A type 2 myocardial infraction is a heart attack secondary to ischemia. That is lack of blood supply. Coming to other myocardial infraction types, they are type 3, type 4 and type 5. So type 4 is again subcategorized into 3 types. Coming to the definition of type 3, a type 3 myocardial infraction is a sudden cardiac death. Whereas a type 4 Type 4A, a type 4A myocardial infraction is one related to percutaneous coronary intervention, PCI. Type 4B is myocardial infraction related to stunt thrombosis. Type 4C is myocardial infraction related to restenosis, re restenosis, re sorry. Type 4C is nothing but myocardial infraction related to restenosis. And finally, a type 5 myocardial infraction is related to coronary artery bypass grafting. A myocardial infraction related to CABG, coronary artery bypass grafting. Now, coming to the definition of subsequent non-ST elevation myocardial infraction. We know that a NST EMI is a non-ST elevation myocardial infraction caused by narrowing of the coronary artery. Here, the artery is not 100% blocked. And a subsequent means, we need to quote the subsequent myocardial infraction when there is a new and the type must be same. A new same type acute myocardial infraction within the four weeks of the initial MI. Then you can quote subsequent myocardial infraction. Whenever a new myocardial acute myocardial infraction of same type occurs within the four week period of the initial myocardial infraction, then you can quote the subsequent myocardial infraction. And the type must be same. They should be of same type, both the attacks. The initial and the subsequent attack must be of same type. Now let us see the each code along with its synonymous terms or alternate terms. The first code is I21.01. It deals with ST elevation myocardial infraction involving left main coronary artery. The next code is I21.02. It deals with ST EMI involving left anterior descending coronary artery. And you can code I21.02 whenever the physician documents ST EMI myocardial infraction involving diagonal coronary artery. Whenever the physician documents ST 
ST elevation myocardial infraction involving diagonal coronary artery, then also you need to code I21.02. The next is I21.09. It deals with ST elevation myocardial infraction involving other coronary artery of anterior wall. And the synonymous terms are acute transmural myocardial infraction of anterior wall. Whenever the physician documents acute transmural myocardial infraction of anterior wall, you need to code I21.09. And whenever he documents anteroapical transmural infraction, anteroapical transmural infraction or anterolateral transmural infraction or anteroseptal transmural Q wave infraction, all are acute cases or transmural infraction of anterior wall NOS. Whenever we find any of these terms in the medical record, you need to code I21.09. The next is I21.11. It deals with ST elevation myocardial infraction involving right coronary artery. Or when the physician documents inferoposterior transmural infraction, then also you can code I21.11. The next code is I21.19. It is STEMI involving other coronary artery of inferior wall. Or acute transmural myocardial infraction of inferior wall NOS. Inferolateral transmural infraction. Transmural infraction diaphragmatic wall. And transmural infraction inferior wall. Whenever the physician documents any of these terms, you need to code I21.19. The next is I21.21. It deals with ST elevation myocardial infraction involving other left circumflex coronary artery. Or ST elevation myocardial infraction involving oblique marginal coronary artery. Even in this case also you need to code I21.21. The next code is I21.29. It deals with ST elevation myocardial infraction involving other sites. Whenever the physician documents acute transmural myocardial infraction of other sites or apical lateral transmural infraction or basal lateral transmural infraction, high lateral transmural infraction, lateral wall, lateral wall NOS transmural infraction, posterior transmural infraction, posterior basal transmural infraction, posterior lateral transmural infraction, posterior septal transmural infraction or septal transmural infraction. Whenever we find any of these terms in the medical record, you need to code I21.29. The next is I21.29. It deals with ST elevation myocardial infraction of unspecified site or acute transmural myocardial infraction of unspecified site or transmural myocardial infraction NOS or type 1 ST elevation myocardial infraction of unspecified site. Next code I21.4. It deals with non-ST elevation myocardial infraction. This is an NOS for non-ST elevation myocardial infraction. Type 1 non-ST elevation myocardial infraction or non-transmural myocardial infraction. Whenever the physician documents non-transmural myocardial infraction. When the physician documents transmural myocardial infraction, the code is I21.3 by default because it is NOS. And when the physician documents non-transmural myocardial infraction, the code is I21.4 or non-Q wave myocardial infraction or acute sub-endocardial myocardial infraction. Whenever all the terms, any of these terms is mentioned, you need to code I21.4. Finally, I21.9, acute myocardial infraction NOS. Whenever the physician simply documents myocardial infraction, you need to code I21.9. The next code is I21.A1. I21.A1. It deals with myocardial infraction type 2 or myocardial infraction due to demand ischemia or myocardial infraction secondary to ischemic balance. Whenever the physician documents myocardial infraction due to demand ischemia, you need to code I21.A1. 
or if he documents type 2 myocardial infarction, then also you need to quote I21.A1. Next is I21.A9, that is other myocardial infarction type. For all these types, type 3, type 4A, 4B, 4C, type 5 and myocardial infraction associated with revascularization procedures. In all these terms, you need to code I21.A9. Now coming to I22.0, it deals with subsequent myocardial infraction. I21.0, the description is subsequent ST elevation myocardial infraction of anterior wall or subsequent acute transmural myocardial infraction of anterior wall or subsequent transmural infraction of anterior wall NOS or subsequent anteroapical transmural infraction or subsequent anterolateral transmural infraction or subsequent anteroseptal transmural infraction. In any of the terms, any of these terms, you need to code I22.0. The next is I22.1, subsequent ST elevation myocardial infraction of inferior wall. Or whenever the physician documents subsequent acute transmural myocardial infraction of inferior wall or subsequent transmural infraction diaphragmatic wall or subsequent transmural infraction inferior wall, NOS or subsequent inferolateral transmural infraction or subsequent inferoposterior transmural infraction. You need to code I21.1. The next is I20, sorry, I22.1. The next code is I22.2. Subsequent non-ST elevation, uh, non-ST elevation myocardial infraction or subsequent acute Subendocardial myocardial infraction or subsequent trans uh, subsequent non Q wave myocardial infraction or subsequent non transmural myocardial infraction. In any of these terms, you need to code I22.2. The next code is I22.8. Subsequent ST elevation myocardial infraction of other sites. Whenever the physician documents subsequent acute transmural myocardial infraction of other sites or subsequent apical lateral transmural myocardial infraction or subsequent basal lateral transmural myocardial infraction or subsequent high lateral transmural myocardial infraction or subsequent transmural myocardial infraction of lateral wall or subsequent posterior true transmural myocardial infraction you need to code I22.8. These are all the synonymous terms. Whenever either of these terms is present, you need to code I22.8. Next is, this is a continuation for I22.8. Subsequent posterior basal transmural myocardial infraction. Subsequent posterior lateral transmural myocardial infraction. Subsequent posterior septal transmural myocardial infraction and subsequent septal NOS transmural myocardial infraction. The code is I22.8. The next is I22.9. Subsequent ST elevation myocardial infraction of unspecified site. Subsequent myocardial infraction NOS means I22.9. Now coming to myocardial infraction codes with current complication. The first code is I23.0. It deals with hemopericardium or as current complication following acute myocardial infraction. The next code is I23.1, atrial septal defect as current complication following acute myocardial infraction. The next is I23.2, ventricular septal defect as current complication following acute myocardial infraction. The next is I23.3, rupture of cardiac wall wall without, without hemo, hemopericardium as a current complication following acute myocardial infraction. The next is I23.4, rupture of chordae tendine as current complication following acute myocardial infraction. The next is I23.5, rupture of papillary muscle as current complication following the acute myocardial infraction. The next is I23.6, 
3.6. It deals with thrombosis of atrium, auricular appendage and ventricle as current complications following acute myocardial infarction. The port for post-infraction angina is I23.7. The next is I23.8. Other current complications following acute myocardial infarction. These are the codes for myocardial infraction with current complication. Now let us see some of the examples. Patient suffers from cardiac wall rupture after acute myocardial infraction. Here, cardiac wall rupture has occurred after the following the AMI. So the code is I23.3. Rupture of cardiac wall without hemopericardium as current complication following acute myocardial infraction. The next example, patient presents with post-infraction angina. The code is I23.7. Next, patient presents with myocardial infraction type 4A. Patient presents with myocardial infraction type 4A. The code is I21.A9. Other myocardial infraction type. Next question. Patient presents with type 5 myocardial infraction. For type 5 or type 4, for both the cases, the code is I21.89, other myocardial infraction type. The next patient presents with transmural Q wave myocardial infraction. So the code is I21.3, ST elevation myocardial infraction of unspecified site. Under this code, you will find a synonymous term, transmural myocardial infraction. For that reason, if the patient presents with transmural myocardial infraction, the code is I21.3. Next, patient presents with acute subendocardial myocardial infraction. The code is I21.4, non-ST elevation myocardial infraction. Because under this code, you will find the acute subendocardial infraction myocardial infraction. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and CPC training.